Hunter was the eldest son in the family and always behaved strictly with his younger brother. And when their father died and the boys were 13 and 11 years old, Hunter became the master of the house. She forced the younger brother to do all the housework and told his mother that he did it. The mother considered her eldest son Hunter an executive helper and always said that he was her support and hope, while Oliver, the younger one, was growing lazy. Oliver was afraid of his brother and kept silent, thinking to himself that it was Hunter who was growing up to be a slacker. But in his heart, the boy hoped that his mother would someday find out the truth. The years passed. Mother worked a lot and was exhausted. Like any mother, she wanted her children to live well and not need anything. Hunter dreamed of becoming a famous person and studied hard. His mother paid for his extra classes and preparatory courses. After school, Hunter went to college and started dating girls. And when a few years later, Oliver graduated from high school, he immediately went to work in a factory. Hunter often borrowed money from his younger brother to buy flowers and movies for the girls, promising to pay him back as soon as possible. But they both knew that these were just words. Why didn't you study more, Oliver? You see, your brother will get an education. He will become a respected man. And what about you? Are you going to be a worker all your life? But Oliver joked that if he went to college, the family would have nothing to live on. After graduating from college, the older hunter got a job where he met a nice woman, Doris. For the first time, he brought his girlfriend into the house and introduced her to his mother and brother as his fiance. The young woman was pretty, smart and serious and Oliver often wondered why his brother was so lucky. Soon, Hunter and Doris were married. The money for the wedding was given by his mother, and Oliver, Hunter, himself, had no savings. Doris's parents gifted the newlyweds a two-room apartment. Soon, Oliver began to notice that his brother was cheating on his wife. He used to tell her that he was going out on a fishing trip with his friends, but instead he was spending his time with another woman. Oliver tried to talk to his brother, but he just waved him off angrily. It's none of your business. Don't pry into my personal life. Get married yourself first, and then we'll talk. Oliver understood that this is really none of his business, but he was sorry for Doris in his own way. He felt that such a woman did not deserve such a mean attitude. He had often witnessed his brother raise his voice at her and demanded that she follow his orders without question, but he could do nothing to help. She made her own choice. And after some time, the factory where Oliver worked was closed and he had to think about what to do next. You should have been studying, son, wailed the mother. Look at Hunter, he got an education. Now he won't be without a job. And you, where will you go now? Without an education, there's nowhere to go. I'll try to start my own business, tried Oliver to calm her down. But his mother kept sighing, and Oliver withdrew all his savings and opened a small photo printing centre. So, a new turn in his life began. A year passed. Oliver, already had enough savings, was constantly buying new equipment for printing, expanding the range of services. One day, Hunter asked him, Brother, lend me some money. I don't have enough for a car. Not enough, asked Oliver. It seems to me you're asking for the whole amount. When will you pay me back? I need the money for the business myself. I'll pay you back. Well, won't you help your brother? And Oliver could not refuse, even though he himself drove a pretty old car and still lived with his mother. Doris sometimes came to see them and brought homemade pies. His mother was happy that Hunter had such a nice wife and criticised Oliver for the fact that he was still not married. When are you going to get married, you naughty boy? Look, your brother has a family and a car and a job, and you're just as talentless as you were. Oliver only smirked, but he did not want to tell his mother how his brother was really doing. 
It's not my time to get married yet, he answered confidently. But I won't lose my way, don't worry, Mum. You'll have time to babysit my children. But soon the mother fell ill. Oliver took her to various doctors, but to no avail. The woman's health was getting worse and worse, and there was no treatment because no one could make a diagnosis. Oliver began to drink frequently out of despair, out of the impossibility to help, and because he saw her torment. Hunter rarely visited his mother, and when she became ill and needed care, he told his wife with a tone of command, Stay with my mother for now. You will take care of her. Do you understand? Yes, I don't mind helping your mother, but why do I have to live there? asked Doris quietly. Because she needs round-the-clock care. Quit your job or take a leave of absence at your own expense. I'll move your things today. Doris knew it was useless to argue with her husband if he decided something, and obediently went to her mother-in-law. Oliver, by then, was constantly drinking, eating nothing, and sitting in his room. Doris put her apartment in order and began to fulfill her new obligations, imposed by her husband and not subject to discussion. She understood that there was no love between her and Hunter, but for some reason she was afraid of him, trembling to her knees and afraid to tell anyone about his abuse. Doris was constantly at her mother-in-law's side. She cooked her broths, fed her, bathed her, did her laundry, cleaned the house. She read books to her mother-in-law and comforted her as best she could. Doris tried to talk to Oliver that his mother needed the support not only of her daughter-in-law, but also of her children. It was she who persuaded him to eat and clean himself up. He was able to pull himself together and began to help Doris. One day, his mother asked to call Hunter to see her. He would not come to the phone, so Doris decided to go get him herself. But there was a shock waiting for her at home. There were woman's shoes on the doorstep, cheerful music was playing, and there were several empty bottles on the kitchen table. A woman in Doris's robe came out into the hallway and without the slightest embarrassment asked, And who are you? Hunter turned around and didn't answer right away as if thinking, That's... But Doris did not let him finish. It's nobody anymore, she shouted and left, slamming the door, running into her mother-in-law's house. Without taking her coat off, she burst into tears right in the hallway. "'What has happened?' inquired Oliver, coming out into the hallway. "'He was with another woman there,' Doris sobbed. Oliver brought a glass of water, and meantime the mother called Doris to her room. She entered the room, wiping away her tears. "'Doris, please invite the notary tomorrow. And now I have to go to bed. Don't be upset.' Everything will be better in the morning. The next day, Doris called the notary, and a couple of hours later he showed up. Doris left the room, closing the doors behind her. A month after the notary's visit, the elderly woman was gone. Doris gathered her things a week after the funeral and called her husband. I'm coming home in two hours. I don't even want your spirit to be there. Clear my apartment of all your things. She returned home, and the apartment was surprisingly vacant. Doris called a handyman and had the locks changed right away. And on the threshold of the mother's apartment, Hunter was met by his brother. There's nothing of yours here. Mother bequeathed this apartment to me, he said through the door ajar at a chain distance and showed a document. But I'm ready to forgive you the debt on the car. Hunter kicked the door for a long time, yelling and threatening, but eventually was forced to leave. Oliver went back to his business. Soon, he opened another copy centre and advertised for an administrator. And Doris, who had lost her job while taking care of her mother-in-law, was the first one that responded. Oliver happily hired her to work in the new shop. And soon, 
he made Doris a proposal to marry him. Not immediately, but she accepted the offer. A little more than 15 years passed. Doris and Oliver had three grown children, a family business and a house in the suburbs. And they heard about Hunter, that he changed many women. It seems he even got married. But maybe that was only rumours.